Hi, I'm Rebecca Berkaguedo. Hi, I'm Mega Sharma. And we're product managers on the Mesh Developer Platform team. We're so happy to be joining you at Build this year to talk about Microsoft Mesh. For today's session, we'll start with a super quick overview of Mesh and the Mesh Toolkit, and then spend the majority of the session deep diving into the Mesh 201 tutorial and demo how you can use Mesh to build a custom world for data-driven decision-making by connecting to live data and AI. So what is Mesh? Mesh is Microsoft's platform for connecting colleagues through 3D immersive collaborative experiences. On both Quest, headsets, and PC, there are a few different ways to use Mesh. In Teams, you can bring your avatar into a traditional meeting, or you can go beyond the video grid into an immersive meeting with just a few clicks using out-of-the-box environments designed for spatial collaboration and connection. For today, we'll focus on how you can build your own custom experiences unique to your business needs, which you can access on the Mesh app. Customers are already unlocking the power of Mesh by creating custom immersive solutions that go beyond the limitations of the physical world. Some examples include all hands and new employee onboarding experiences to bring employees together from around the world to connect and foster learning and creativity. We're also seeing Mesh used for simulations, specialized training scenarios, and guided tours or demos. These digital twins can be great for designing or exploring places that are difficult to access or don't even exist yet. And of course, Mesh also facilitates deeper human connections across physical distances with social gatherings that have a real sense of co-presence. Now, let's talk about how you can build these custom experiences using the Mesh Toolkit. The Mesh Toolkit supports Unity, so you can build content in a familiar way and leverage existing assets and scenes. The Toolkit also offers a ton of great features for every step of the developer journey, from graphics tools to help you design a rich and performant environment, to interactables, physics, web content, and scripting for adding logic and life to your experience. Once you start exploring Mesh, it won't take you long to be productive. We have a library of samples and tutorials available as part of our Mesh Toolkit. But if you're wondering where to begin meshing around, look no further than Mesh 101. The Mesh 101 tutorial covers the basic building blocks used to create a common Mesh scenario, interactive learning, which in this case is about wind turbines. You'll get a solid understanding of the power of Mesh, spanning Mesh interactables and physics, scripting, and more. Begin with a pre-built Unity project, enhance it with custom interactivity and Mesh features, and deploy it as an environment to Microsoft Mesh for a multi-user experience. And for some more fun, Toybox is a Mesh sample that empowers creators to build interactive Mesh experiences and games for team building and helping new users become familiar with interactions in Mesh. The sample provides activities such as an icebreaker and mixtures of assets to drive social engagement across Mesh experiences. If you like what you see, you can use the Toybox package to import any activity into your own Unity project. Our Physics Effects Gallery sample contains a large collection of simple examples that demonstrate individual features and possible ways of combining them. Get inspired to creatively use Mesh Physics features found in the toolkit, such as explosions, force fields, triggers, and controllers. Feel free to inspect, modify, and play with the scene, or use elements to creatively enhance your own custom experiences. And then we have the Science Building, which is a carefully designed museum showcasing the synergy of captivating visuals and creative mesh physics features. Dive into interactive exhibits and activities, from exploring magnetism to experimenting with a gravity simulator and mastering buoyancy and balance. Feel free to make these samples your own or check them out for inspiration. To get started with your Mesh development journey, go to aka.ms slash Mesh Creator to explore documentation, samples, upcoming events, and community resources. Now, there's one tutorial that wasn't featured in the last video, and that's because I'm going to show it to you now. This is our Mesh 201 tutorial. Like we mentioned, Mesh 101 sets the stage with an immersive learning scenario where a company is educating its users on wind turbines via interactive stations in Mesh. But brace yourself because we're about to go to even taller heights by adding live data. Mesh 201 demonstrates how we can bring in your data to enhance training and simulations, visualize it on a globe, leverage web content, and harness the power of AI to inform a business decision. Also, reminder that you can make your virtual world about virtually anything. 
It doesn't have to be about wind turbines. This is just an example. We'll switch over to Unity and enter the magical world of web slates. But before we do that, let's cover what is a web slate. A web slate enables you to bring everyday apps and information from the web into Mesh. You can use it to view and interact with content like dashboards, web pages, and soon M365 apps. Maps, diagrams, and data all are interactive in 3D when you're using web slates. I'll show you how to load HTML data into a slate and make it shared among all attendees in the experience. So let's dive in. First, we'll add a web slate prefab. There are two options, one slate with a frame and one without. Let's be fancy and choose the framed one. It also matches the mesh design language. The default link here is the Microsoft homepage, but you can pretty much display any website. Let's spice things up and change the link to a Power BI dashboard. We'll make supplier quality analysis a little bit stylish. Web slates were built with security in mind. I'm going to allow the domain for Power BI to secure the experience, so I'm preventing any possibility of malicious redirects or unintended experiences for users. Now, let's get this in the right place and update the values in the transform component. This is much better. So we've shown you how to customize a web slate and specify a URL, but what if I want to do some simple scene logic and toggle to an HTML file with a button? Good news, web slates are scriptable. So let's use Mesh Visual Scripting, the easiest way to add interactivity and magic to your environments with zero latency responsiveness and zero code. Let's check out the node structure for our button script over here in chapter three. When we select our load button game object, we see it has a script machine component containing an embedded script named load HTML and a variable that contains our HTML file. Note that the second node in this script is named mesh interactable body. The fate of your event attendees depends on this node. If you want only the person triggering an event to experience it, use the node that says is selected locally. If you want all attendees in the event to experience it, select the node that simply says is selected, which is what we're doing. Now let's get an HTML page. As you can see, the script graph has been started for you and we'll fill in the blanks to enable the load button. Let's drag the web slate framed object from the hierarchy and then drop it in the first field in the get component in children node. Then let's add the web slate load HTML content node and connect these. We're going to get the variable that contains the asset and then connect that to the data input of the load HTML content node. Now let's make our way over to the 3D game object in the scene that represents our beautiful planet Earth. In this chapter, we explore a way to load data from the web into a web slate. We'll update a script that when you click on the globe, the latitude and longitude are captured and Bing Maps provides a map of the chosen area. Now let's go into the Earth Action script to work with our web slate. The first group contains a node called Web Slate Load with a value of the Bing Maps URL. Right now, things are set up so that every time you click the Earth object, this URL loads into the slate. In the URL Builder group, the first node, Get Variable Object, loads the variable that contains the coordinate that was clicked on, the Earth object. The next few nodes after the Microsoft Mesh on state change node takes that coordinate, converts it to a string, and attaches it as a parameter to the end of the Bing Maps URL in the string. The set variable node initializes the web slate URL variable with the URL. Now we just need to ensure that this URL, which manually changes every time the earth is clicked, loads into the slate and we can do that by creating a web slate load node. Drag the web slate frame child object named web slate from the hierarchy and then drop it in the field that displays this in the web slate load node and connect our new URL to the URL data input. Our logic is now complete, so let's test this all out in the Mesh emulator. Let's use our imagination and say we're a globally distributed enterprise specializing in renewable energy. Now looking at chapter two, I can see an awesome Power BI dashboard and interact with it just like a normal browser. At chapter three, I can toggle between a web page and a write-up talking about sustainability in secure HTML format, getting a shared content experience with my participants. You can see how loading HTML content in Mesh via web slate lets you display secure offline files, enabling users to dynamically load them at runtime and rapidly test changes in the Mesh emulator. Now, speaking of wind energy across the world, let's check out our world right here. Here we can put a pin on the 3D model of Earth and see its exact location on the map. 
A good way to get further insights into your scripts is to watch them in the script graph window as you try out features in the emulator. For example, in this project, you can see the latitude and longitude of the location clicked on the Earth object flowing out of the connectors from the Microsoft Mesh on state changed node. That can get a little bit addicting. You'll notice that visual scripting and cloud scripting are better together and can coexist in the same scene. We are actively investing in integration between them. Now, I know what you're thinking, show me the AI. Get ready to be blown away some more. I'll pass the mic to Rebecca. Thanks so much, Mega. Now, let's take a look at how we can use cloud scripting and AI to take this hypothetical wind farm scenario to the next level. With cloud scripting, you can pull live data from internal or public sources into your mesh scene. The scripts you write in C Sharp are .NET apps and can call any .NET Core API, access NuGet libraries, and leverage best-in-class tools to power your experiences. When it comes to AI, conversational AIs are uniquely valuable in Mesh, where the spatial context inherent to your environment and your scenario, things like what you're looking at, the objects you're interacting with, the data you're working with, can all be passed to LLMs via cloud scripting as an additional context to create truly enriching and useful AI-powered interactions that enhance the types of social and productivity scenarios that we mentioned earlier. So in this area of the Mesh 201 tutorial, we've set up a super simple cloud app to pull live weather data from Redmond, Washington, Lagos, Nigeria, and Dublin, Ireland. These are the three locations where most of our Mesh team members are based. So these are the locations that we're considering for building our next wind farm. All we're doing here is passing the latitude and longitude of each location to a publicly available weather API, which returns the data that we're interested in, including temperature, wind speed, and gust speed, all super useful data points for considering where to build a wind farm. The globe itself is the trigger for this interaction. Clicking it refreshes the weather data, and uh, we've taken the trouble to nicely overlay the data that gets returned onto the globe, which you can grab and rotate as you consider which city to choose. But what are some other factors that might be useful to consider when choosing a location to build a new wind farm? Or what if I'm new to this mesh scene and I don't know what I'm looking at? That's where AI can come in. Using cloud scripting and a few simple UI components that we provide, you can easily connect to an AI backend to create a simple chatbot experience to enrich our scene and help us make this decision about where to build the wind farm. So back in Unity, We've got a simple info button, which you've seen in previous samples, which acts as the trigger for launching my input dialog. Now let's jump into Visual Studio and check out what's going on underneath the hood. After setting up a connection with Azure OpenAI in my initialization code, I'm ready to set up the AI interaction. When the info button gets pressed, we pop a dialog box where a user can enter text input, and support for voice input is coming very soon and which we've labeled with the prompt, Ask Azure OpenAI. Once we get the participant's input, we're ready to send that, plus some context, to our LLM of choice, which in this case is the Azure OpenAI deployment of GPT 3.5 Turbo. But you can use any other AI backend, such as Copilot Studio or a different LLM. To create a useful wind farm building assistant, the context we need to pass to our LLM here as a system message is surprisingly little. Along with the current weather data that we got earlier by clicking on the globe, this short paragraph tells the LLM that it's a wind farm building assistant inside a mesh developer sample, that we're looking at weather data from three locations on a globe, and that its purpose is to help us analyze which location might be best for building a new wind farm. We've also added the constraint to limit the number of words in its responses so that it stays concise. These cues are all it needs to be able to tell us about our scenario and help us make our decision. So I can play around in Visual Studio and refine my LLM prompt and then test these changes locally in Unity play mode, but why don't we jump into Mesh and try it out in an actual event? As a newcomer to this part of the scene, Mega can ask a question like, what am I looking at? And get context about the data and the decisions at hand. With the data inputs and scenario context provided, the LLM can help us decide where to build our wind farm. It can even provide additional insights into factors that we haven't yet considered or explicitly told it about, acting as an equal collaborator in this data-driven decision-making scenario. 
The 201 sample, as you saw it today, is available to you now. But this is really only just the beginning for AI and Mesh. So stay tuned for more updates from us as we go on this journey to leverage the spatial context inherent in Mesh for creating richer AI-powered experiences. Mega, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling really energized thinking about how Mesh makes it so easy to create meaningful, immersive experiences. Yeah, with the Mesh Toolkit and the power of AI, it's really a breeze. So where can folks go to get started building their own Mesh experiences? To get started, visit aka.ms slash Mesh Creator for access to documentation, all the samples we mentioned here today, and tons of additional community resources. Or you can scan this QR code to jump directly to the Mesh 201 sample. Thank you all so much for joining us here today, and we can't wait to see what you'll build.